Sunny weather makes it easy to play outside, do work around the yard, go on vacation, and even go to school. Sometimes weather changes very fast. You might get caught in a rain shower on a summer afternoon. In the winter, a snowstorm can happen overnight. In the spring, some people have to watch out for tornadoes. Without a good weather forecast, you might be in danger. People who make weather forecasts are called meteorologists. They have an important job because bad weather can keep airplanes from flying. It could keep food and vegetables from growing. It can make cars get stuck on a highway or it can just rain out a baseball game. Meteorologists have many tools to help forecast the weather. Before they make a forecast or a weather prediction, they have to know exactly what the weather is doing right now. The first part of making a weather forecast is measuring the weather. A meteorologist must know if it is cloudy or sunny, hot or cold, wet or dry, and which way the air is moving. We use our eyes to see the weather and our bodies can feel the wind, temperature, and even humidity. Since everyone feels weather a little differently, meteorologists use tools called weather instruments to take measurements. A weather instrument that you probably have in your home is a thermometer. Thermometers measure heat. They tell us how warm or cold the air is. When you read the number on a thermometer, you are reading the air temperature. High temperatures mean the air is warm, and low temperatures mean the air is cold. Sometimes when you are riding down the street, you'll see a big thermometer in front of banks and other buildings. Meteorologists measure how strong the wind is with an instrument that spins, called an anemometer. The stronger the wind is, the faster the anemometer spins. Wind is important to know because it pushes weather around the earth. Because wind starts in different places, we need another tool to tell where it is coming from. You can see this instrument on top of houses and barns. It's a wind vane. When the air moves across the wind vane, it makes the wind vane point into the wind. That way we know where the wind is coming from. The wind vanes that meteorologists use look more like this. You can make your own wind vane using cardboard, scissors, tape, a sewing pin, a pencil, and a straw. Cut out the cardboard into the shape of a small rectangle. Then cut a triangle out of the rectangle, as you see right here. Tape the triangle to one end of the straw and tape the other piece of cardboard to the other end. Now stick the pin through the middle of the straw so that it is flat with the pieces of cardboard. Now stick the pin and straw into the eraser on the pencil. You've just made a wind vane. When the wind blows, the wind vane will show you where it is coming from. Now which way is the wind coming from? Winds come from four main directions, but you need another tool to know what the directions are. That tool is called a compass. A compass is an instrument that shows which way is north, south, east, and west. Once a meteorologist knows where the wind is coming from, he or she can know if it will be a wet wind, dry wind, cold wind, or warm wind. Learn which way is north, south, east, and west where you live. The directions always stay the same. It helps to remember that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. When we take weather measurements, we also need to know how much air is on top of us. We don't feel air unless it's moving, but air is strong and sometimes heavy. Look at this. Air is strong enough to hold you on top of a balloon. To measure how strong the air is, we use an instrument called a barometer. When the barometer shows a lower number, we say the air pressure is low. Low pressure comes along with cloudy weather and sometimes stormy weather. When the barometer shows a higher number, then the air pressure is high. High pressure brings clear skies and usually dry weather. 
Did you know that even when the weather is dry, there's invisible water in the air? It's called humidity. Humidity is a way to tell how much water or moisture is floating around us in the air. The instrument used to measure humidity is called a hygrometer. A low number on a hygrometer means the air is dry. That's what you find in a desert. When hygrometers show high numbers, we say the air is humid, and that means that clouds might form to make rain. Clouds are easy to see with our eyes, but we only see a small part of the sky. Meteorologists use weather satellites to look down on Earth to show the clouds all over. Once you know where you are on Earth, you can see the clouds that are moving your way. Some clouds make rain or snow, and we need to know that so we can dress properly. When there is rain or snow, we use a tool called a radar to know where the rain or snow is falling. Radars show precipitation as it falls to the ground. When snow falls and piles up, you can measure it with a ruler, but to measure rain, you have to catch it in something first. A jar will work fine, but meteorologists use a rain gauge. A rain gauge is a tube that has numbers on the side to show you how much rain fell. When you take weather readings, you are watching or observing the different parts of weather. It ends up to be a lot of measuring and a lot of math. Instead of just writing down numbers, meteorologists put some measurements on a map, graph, or chart. Maps, graphs, and charts help to show a lot of information in a way that's easy to understand. We can see how the weather is changing by how the line slants on a graph. Don't forget to use your eyes. One easy observation you can make is to guess the color of the sky. You can use a piece of cardboard to make a sky chart. Put different colors on your chart to try to match it to the sky. Keep track of the colors in a week. Now that we know how to measure weather, we are ready to make a weather forecast. Predicting the weather can be tricky because so many things happen in the air above our heads. We can't always see or measure them, but the easiest forecast starts with the wind. Let's say that it is sunny and dry in your city, and there's a rainstorm in a place called Allentown to your west. If the wind is blowing from west to east, it means that the rain will probably leave Allentown and get pushed toward you. Or, let's say that it is cloudy and warm where you are, but there's a lot of cold air north of you. If the wind is blowing from north to south, then the wind will blow the cold air toward you. As long as you know how fast the wind is blowing and how far away something is from you, you can use math to figure out how long it will take to reach you. The main wind that moves weather systems around the Earth is a few miles or a few kilometers above the ground. It's called the jet stream. We know it's there because we see it move clouds on a satellite. We also know about the jet stream because meteorologists around the world send weather balloons up into the air every day. These balloons carry instruments to give us the wind, temperature, humidity, and air pressure above the ground. When you take all the readings from weather balloons, satellites, radars, thermometers, barometers, hygrometers, anemometers, and wind vanes, you can use them in computers to make weather predictions for a day or even a week ahead. These computers are much more powerful than the one you have at home. They use math to make predictions. Even though computers can make a prediction fast, it does not mean it's better than a prediction that a person makes. Forecasts from computers are not perfect, and they probably never will be, but they do give meteorologists an idea of how the weather might change. A good weather forecaster knows what kind of weather happens in a city. We all know that it is hot near the equator in the summer and cold near the South Pole in the winter. A person would never forecast a hurricane to start in mountains because they never do. When you forecast the weather, it helps to know what the weather was like a week ago, a month ago, and for many years in the past. Even if you don't keep track of your own weather, 
You can find out what the weather was by checking reports in newspapers How would you know that? and on the Internet. Sometimes weather forecasts are easy because weather in some cities repeats itself almost every day. In places near water, you can predict fog in the morning or summer thunderstorms to happen at the same time every day. In deserts, you can predict sunny and hot weather. Most of the time, the forecast will be correct. Whenever weather happens the same way over and over, we call that a cycle. A cycle is anything that repeats itself. Day and night is a cycle. The seasons are a cycle. Many things in weather are cycles, but you have to study weather long enough to figure them out. When you look at storms around the Earth from a satellite, you can almost see why they happen on a cycle. When they are spaced apart evenly, the wind pushes them at the same speed, so the weather in any city would change on a cycle. Watching and studying the weather makes weather forecasting a lot easier. Nobody knows for sure what weather tomorrow will bring. You can use simple instruments to measure your own weather and make your own prediction. To make a weather forecast, measure before you start. Keep watching the sky and stay weather smart. Now let's take a quiz. Can you predict your grade? Answer these questions, true or false. Number one, the wind affects which way weather moves. Number two, if you want to know air pressure, you need to have a thermometer. Number three, satellites show us the clouds over Earth. Number four, computers use math to make weather forecasts. Number five, one day weather forecasts will be perfect. Number six, radar shows you where there is rain or snow. Number seven, meteorologists measure the weather before they forecast. Number eight, air pressure is measured with a barometer. Number nine, low pressure means dry, sunny weather. And number 10, Snow can be measured with a ruler.